to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. Today is a What Would Lou Do show. However, it's not a What Would Lou Do in the strictest sense of the word, because not one of you specifically emailed me and asked me this question. But I do talk about this incessantly when I meet you in real life in person. And the thing is, if you have an actual question that you'd like to ask, what would Lou do? Definitely email the go to luannigara.com forward slash WWLD. And it will take you right to the form to ask your question. And then maybe I'll answer your question on air, right? So today we are talking about the three beliefs that are holding back your interior design business and how to avoid them. Okay. One of the things that happens often is you'll ask me how you can justify your price. Or more accurately, you'll tell me that you cannot raise your price or you cannot charge higher margins or you cannot charge higher fees. It's just not possible, especially when you tell me in my area. That's my favorite thing. I'll save that for another day. If you've ever asked me that question in person, you've got the full on Luann answer to it. But the thing about it is in whichever way this sentence comes out or the question is raised or the statement is made, It always indicates to me a fundamental misunderstanding about what you do and why clients hire you, an interior designer. Over and over, I see the same three mistaken beliefs holding you back. So we're going to talk about the three of them, and we're going to talk about how you can reframe your thinking around them, hopefully in an effort to boost your bottom line and to boost your morale. All right, here we go. Belief number one, your clients are looking for the biggest discount, that this is why they come to you because they're looking for the biggest discount. Okay, so here's the thing. If you're worried about justifying your price to clients, maybe you have the belief that your clients are coming to you to save money. But the deal is your clients are coming to you because you charge the lowest rate or because you can get the sofa on a discount. They're not. They're coming to you because you offer an experience. Interior design is a luxury service at any level, even entry level interior design is luxury. It is not a requirement. It's not food, water, air, sleep. It's not. It's a luxury. Clients who call an interior designer are not shopping around for the cheapest rate on furniture. They're looking for advice on the furniture amongst a million other things. The point of all of us lamenting the internet that they can shop for the cheapest sofa on their own. Well, the thing is, they need to know which sofa, with which rug, with which lamp, with which all the things. If you believe that your client only wants the biggest discounts, you will hold yourself back from charging what you're worth. And you know what I always say, don't save your clients money for them, okay? The thing about it is, is I understand that there are some clients that have this mistaken belief, but you can send them on their way. They are not your clients. The problem where this arises and where I think it gets in your way of being profitable is when you attach this belief to clients who don't come to you with this belief. Do you see the difference? This is the essence of don't save your clients money for them. Okay. You have to be confident in your process so that you can be confident in your prices. Okay. When you deliver the service and you know you're worth it, then you are confident and you are confident in the value you bring to the table. So I'm just going to repeat this again. 
I'm not saying that the people out there don't exist that want and come to an interior designer because they mistakenly, they have a mistaken belief that that's how you get a discount on furniture. I get it. I'm running around the block a time or two. I know there's people that say that. But here is my huge cry to you. That's not your client. That's not your client. The problem is when you have a client who comes to you with either a full-on understanding of the interior design process and what it delivers, or at least a good working knowledge of it, and your own brain then says, oh, they want to save money. Oh, I can't charge too much or they won't do it. You see the distinction I'm making here? If you don't, you come to me. You come to me in my Facebook group. You come to me in email. You, you find me because this is the distinction that I'm making. All right? So be confident in your process, in your service, and your, in your deliverables because the grown-up client that wants a grown-up service gets it. What they want are those things, and they will pay you for them, all right? Now, belief, mistaken belief number two is that you deliver a shoppable product, okay? This time, you know, I, I, when I hear this, I worry that when I do pick the right sofa, they'll just go online and find it and buy it. Okay. Like, first of all, this is exactly why I asked Tracy Connell to teach buy wholesale for profit at Luann University, because I had too many conversations with designers who were selling retail, were getting shopped and did. And when I said, why are you not selling trade? They literally said to me, I don't know how. I, I get that. I have compassion for that all day long. This is a complicated business. So we have buy wholesale for profit. Tracy Connell is a seasoned interior designer, and I know firsthand from working with her over a year in the middle of her business that she is buying wholesale and she is selling it at healthy margins and markups, and she is making bank. Okay. Her line is normalizing wealth for interior designers. So, yes. If you are going to source from the same Tom, Dick, and Harry places that I can get as a consumer, well, then, yeah, you're probably going to run into this now and again. But that would be like a five-star Michelin restaurant shopping for their ingredients at the Piggly Wiggly. You are the retailer. Your business model should be that you are buying wholesale and selling retail. Okay? And with all the advances in quality rendering, I'm just going to add... You can also pitch your hat into the space of designing your own one-off pieces, furniture, cabinetry, whatever you want. Now, if you're like, what are you talking about? Go back and listen to the episode with Fernando Duque. And we had Nicole and Elle on the podcast, two luxury interior designers. And these two ladies specifically discussed how they use Duke Renders for all the ways to make profit and close their projects faster, quicker, more efficiently. But they also use Duke renders when they want to design a piece that they see in their mind. And they're sort of like, I think that would be really cool. And then they have Duke render it and they're like, oh yeah, that's awesome. Or, oh, that leg looks a little silly or that detail doesn't make sense. But then they render it again and then they take it to a vendor to have it built. It's amazing. This is leveling the field for you, okay? This is utilizing and leveraging your trade resources to your advantage. The consumer isn't going to do grinders, but you can, okay? So we will put that episode in the show notes. You've got to listen to it. Another aspect of this same point is that when you design a room, do you just look up pieces of furniture and pop them into a rendering or a uh, mood board? I'm betting pretty much no. You think about your client's lifestyle, their goals. You think about the lighting and how it impacts the choices you make. You consider the overall effect of the entire room. You tell a story with the design you create. Your clients can't go out and replicate that by shopping online. Okay? Here's another proof for it if you want even another proof of this whole concept. If Five designers were given the same project for the same client with the same goals, the same family, the same aesthetic, the same desires. Each one of you would turn the project out differently. I mean, 
this, can you debate that with me? This is how you know that what you do and what you provide is not simply an add to the cart experience. It is essential to view what you do as completely separate from the pieces you procure. You're selling your, your experience, your expertise, your attention to detail, your creativity. You're selling you. Okay? Which leads me to mistaken belief number three, that you are competing with everyone else. Or I'll just cl clarify that you're competing with anyone else. Okay? Truth be told, even if you did offer a shoppable product, you would still be delivering more than a commodity. I know this from firsthand experience in four decades at Window Works. We have had within a five mile radi radius of us, no less than at every given time of our 40 years in business, a minimum of three and sometimes six or seven competing, quote unquote, competing window treatment retailers within a five mile radius of us. Okay. In fact, there was a Hunter Gal Douglas gallery dealer within a mile. Um, I called it gallery. What I mean to say is um, centurion, like the highest level of Hunter Douglas dealer. So what this meant was that when there was a zip code search for Hunter Douglas, they got the lead, not us. Okay. When there was ranking for Hunter Douglas in our zip code, they got it, not us. Because you know, they were the highest level Hunter Douglas dealer and Hunter Douglas was throwing their marketing machine behind them as they should. Okay. But in all those years, I don't think, I don't think there were two times I ran into a situation where I was actually competing with them for business one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, we were selling this exact same product, but the way we approached our process was completely different. That company and the others always talked about the product because they believed that the Hunter Douglas quality was the value. And I'm going to tell you what, Hunter Douglas products are extremely high quality. Hunter Douglas is hands down the innovator in our industry. But a blind at the end of the day is a commodity. It is a product that you can get anywhere from anyone that has an account with Hunter Douglas. Me, on the other hand, and everybody at Window Works, we always talked about the experience, our customer service, the longevity of our team. I knew the key to put the positioning Window Works as the best choice, as the best resource for the same commodity available everywhere else was to differentiate us. And I discussed all the things that made us different, not the same. You can do that too. And I would tell you what, I would argue it's a whole lot easier because with an interior design business, there are a ton more ways that you are going to personally affect the process than I could as a window treatment retailer. You know, I mean, it's pretty much a six-week thing. Hi, hello, measure, sell, order, install six weeks later. Not a lot there in that process for really making the case that dealing personally with me is going to um, impact your life in a way that when you say, well, we're going to be in bed together for six months or two years, somebody will take that seriously, right? But it's possible. I did it. So I know you can do it. I know you can do it. Okay. Now, the real difference between a designer who has to justify their prices and one who doesn't receive pushback ultimately is this understanding combined with confidence. When you know your value and you can communicate it, you aren't competing with anyone else. You don't need to convince your clients to work with you by charging less. That doesn't work anyway. Your clients choose you not because you pick out furniture but then better than someone else, but because you deliver a better outcome than they can get on their own and that they resonate with the way you explain it. And in the end, the cool thing is, is, it will save them time and money, okay? But not in the way that you think they come to you to save money. That's the real magic too, ultimately. They will work with you because you offer a service that they can't get anywhere else, a process that feels good, and a design that elevates their home and their lives. The sooner you realize that you offer more than pieces on a spec list, 
the sooner you'll stop treating your work like a commodity and start charging prices indicative of the luxury service you actually provide. And you know what? I'm going to add a final thought to all of this regarding AI. And let's call this new brand new bonus mistaken belief number four. I feel like I keep hearing that AI is going to be the end of the design industry or at least impact it negatively. And, you know, all kinds of people are talking about this. And do I have a crystal ball? No. Am I any smarter than the next guy? No. But do I have like, you know, pretty good instincts and I've been around the block and I've seen a lot of changes in my lifetime in my business career. And I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, you know, I don't think it's going to impact your business negatively. I just don't, okay? And it's really because of all the things that I've already said in this podcast episode. So here's what happens now. Instead of finding a sofa online, they can at AI create a sofa or create a floor plan. But here, not only is the luxury experience also eliminated, but so now too is the expertise. Your design process is iterative from every single thing you've ever done, from your very first project for your mom or your Aunt Sally. You have learned from every single one, from your mistakes and your successes, and you have perfected your skill and your creativity with every conference you've attended, every market you've gone to, every podcast you've listened to, and every book and magazine on design you've read. Remember that saying, garbage in, garbage out? Yeah, it's the same with AI. What the heck do you think the average consumer knows about designing a floor plan? Okay. I mean, if you don't put in good information, you're not going to get good information out. Heck, I got to tell you, most garden variety consumers can't even measure a room well enough to put the information into the AI prompt. All right. And you know what I'm talking about. You can, almost anybody can measure a room. But what I'm talking about is, Have you ever ordered a sofa or a Roman shade that didn't fit in the freight elevator? Yep, check. Okay, but you did it one time. You didn't do it 10 times, right? How about have you ever measured a tight space to be thrilled that the dresser will fit or the vanity will fit only to find out that when it gets there, you didn't look down and see the three-quarter inch wide baseboard moldings? Yep, I know you've done it. We've all done it. So you know what I say? Go let the consumers build their floor plans. Let them send a, spend a gabillion hours on the internet doing it and then finding all the things and let all the hot mess of hodgepodge of crap that won't fit, won't look right together, all get delivered. It'll be the first and last time. Trust me. Okay? Right? I mean, think about you are not just delivering a floor plan. You are delivering your all your years. I don't care if it's three months of experience. It's three months more than the garden variety human has. Into those AI prompts to make sure that the outcome is good. Not garbage in, garbage out. Okay? And one more thing while I'm on this rant. Let's just go. Okay? We all know there are some humans that have a neck, that have an eye for design, that live every day as doctors, baristas, stay-at-home moms, who will measure right, who will look for the floorboards, who will understand a little bit more, okay? And who will prompt AI or good enough to spill out a decent plan? And who then will take that and source from retail a pretty beautiful combination of ideas, of items, I mean. I agree. There are people who can do this. But guess what? AI didn't steal them from you. AI didn't take that consumer from you. That consumer was never, ever going to hire a designer. That is the closet designer who actually can create a pretty great space and would have never paid one dime in his or her lifetime for a designer because he or she enjoys the process. They get pride in the completion. He or she is fulfilling her creative side. And he or her, she was never your client. They are out there from the beginning of time. They're always going to be there. So what I'm saying to you is, The people with no skills, no innate talent, no expertise, no experience, they are not going to have successful outcomes with AI. Because that's like, there's AI out there that probably designs code for computer. Like, do you think you can go do it? 
because AI will help you do it? Like, what kind of, like, let's, let's imagine a computer programmer looking at you going, oh, my God, you're going to steal my job because you can now put code into AI. Like, really? Come on. Okay? So the thing is, the hobbyist, the enthusiast, they're out there. There are people that have, that, there's people that in five years will drop being a barista to be a designer because they've always loved it. We've heard the story a thousand times on the show. But they were never going to pay you. So don't worry about them. They're out there, okay? In the end, it's like I always say, you provide a luxury service for the people who appreciate it, who want it, who know they cannot do it without you, and they have no desire to do it without you, okay? And they also want what others cannot get. They want unique. They want elevated. They want personal. They want customization to them. And for that, they have to go to the professional. That's you, <laughs> right? I mean, can I get an amen on this? Seriously. Oh, my goodness. I get very passionate about this. I have to say, if you're listening in real time, right now I'm in Orlando at Luann Live, and I'm probably ranting about this on stage as you listen to this, okay? So I would love for you to head over to my IG stories to see all of the shenanigans happening at Luann Live. And I also want to remind you that Luann University registration will be opening in a couple of weeks in November 2023. We are only running a winter semester this year, so do not delay. I'm not going to run it again in the spring or the fall. We're doing once a year. If you know, for example, you need to understand how to buy wholesale furniture, then I encourage you take Tracy's course, Buy Wholesale for Profit, okay? If you are unsure how to talk about your company in a way that differentiates you from other designers, get in Jude Charles' storytelling course or Rachel Moriarty's Social Selling for Creatives. I have literally crafted, selected, found the people and the courses for Luann University to give you the answers, skills, and strategies that you just don't get anywhere else, not in design school and not in the school of hard knocks. So up-level your business and reach your goals in 2024. Go to luannuniversity.com to see the entire roster. Okay. So I'm curious your opinion on my mistaken beliefs. I encourage you to chat about it and yell about it and rant about it and all the things about it in my Facebook group, Luann Nigara and Friends, um, or on the post in Instagram. So um, that's it. I think I'm done ranting for today. I really, really, really do want you to be the best you can be. I want you to take this passion that you have and I want you to have it out in the world. I want all the clients who should get the benefit of it, get the benefit of it, but I want it to benefit you and your family and your lifestyle. I want you to make it profitable so that you can do it for as many years as you decide to do it and you can do it with happiness and joy, right? Decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara, Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day.